Plate Motion Engineering Internship Day 6, Choosing an Optimal Design. A reminder that you can access your digital resources in the lesson brief of every lesson. Even though activities are available in Amplify Lessons, you will be working in the Futura Workspace. You can find the Futura Workspace in your Amplify main menu. In this lesson, we receive and discuss design feedback, consider design trade-offs, cause and effect, and use the digital model to revise and test our sensor plans to create optimal designs, structure and function. Activity 1, Connecting to Futura Workspace. You'll read and pin today's message, Optimal Designs. Then you'll add your daily message notes by creating a new header with today's date and message topic. Students, open Futura Workspace and read the daily message from the project director. Remember that the new message, titled Day 6, Optimal Designs, should be at the top of the inbox. Add notes at the top of your existing daily message notes with the new heading, Day 6, Optimal Designs. All of the notes you take for this message should fall under this heading. Ensure that you are clear on your tasks for the day. Completing the design feedback summary, recording several new designs, identifying an optimal design, after hours completing the trade-offs reflection. Reviewing design feedback. You received feedback letters from Hannah. The feedback has suggestions, but not answers, about how to improve your designs in the next iteration. The feedback doesn't provide answers because there are many possible solutions to this problem. To figure out whether Hannah thinks your results for each criterion were strong, moderate, or weak, you can look for phrases that state if something is good, just okay, or not great, and needs a lot of improvement. These phrases are clues for how to make changes to your next iterations. I submitted an example design to Hannah, and she shared some of her feedback with me so I could demonstrate how to interpret her comments. Let's analyze Hannah's example feedback. I'll show larger versions of parts of this letter for us to discuss. I'm looking for language that will help me determine how my design performed for each criterion. The parts highlighted in yellow tell us that the design moderately addresses the criterion of maximizing average warning time. Good, but more time would be better. Give people enough time to get to safety. Note that the highlighted parts of the paragraph represent feedback on how the design moderately addressed the criterion. The parts highlighted in green tell us the design strongly addressed the criterion of minimizing false alarms. Note that the highlighted parts of the paragraph represent feedback on how the design strongly addressed the criterion. Result for false alarms is great. Try to make sure your final design has a false alarm result like this one. The parts highlighted in pink tell us that the design weakly addressed the criterion of low cost. Note that the highlighted parts of the paragraph represent feedback on how the design weakly addressed the criterion. Very expensive, probably not be able to keep the system working, may have to choose between keeping the sensors maintained or building new roads or schools. You will each get a sheet for recording notes on your feedback and highlighters for color coding your notes. First, we'll review an example sheet together. You'll start by filling in the top row with details of the warning system version you submitted for feedback. This will be the design version that you marked with a star on your Tsunami Alert data sheet or you can review the design information by opening the Tsunami Alert design form in Futura Workspace. As you read your feedback letters, you'll record notes on the second row of the table. Try to keep your notes brief instead of copying long parts of the letter. Students, read the notes in the table. These are an example of brief notes. You should interpret the project director's suggestions through short notes to yourself. You can color code each cell to show how well your design addressed each criterion. Green, strongly, yellow, moderately, pink, weakly. In this example, it is clear that the design strongly addresses the criterion of minimizing false alarm, but needs to work in the other criteria. Open and read your feedback letters from Hannah. Students, open your feedback letters labeled Feedback Tsunami Alert Design in your workspace inboxes. Take a few minutes to read or reread the letter independently. Summarize Hannah's feedback by filling in the top two rows. Use color to show where your design was strong, moderate, and weak. Students, look at the design feedback summary sheet. Record notes in the table. Color code the feedback as this acts as a quick reminder, quick reference to identify where your designs were successful and where they need work. You will complete the goal and design sections later. We can use this table to record the values that meant a design addressed the criteria strongly, moderately, or weakly. Let's start with the criterion of maximizing warning time. 
Which average warning times meant your design addressed the criterion strongly? What about moderately? Next, we'll think about the criterion of minimizing false alarms. How many false alarms meant your design addressed the criterion strongly? What about moderately? Now let's consider the criterion of minimizing total 50-year cost. What total 50-year cost meant your design addressed the criterion strongly? What about moderately? Were any of you able to strongly address all three criteria? It is very hard to address all three criteria equally well, but it's important to try to improve your designs as much as possible for each criterion. Sometimes, to strongly address one criterion, you have to give up how well you address another. These are trade-offs, and you probably experience these trade-off decisions in your daily lives. You will have some time today for iterative testing to improve your designs. Trade-off when you have to give up one thing in return for another. At Futura, engineers consider trade-offs in their designs when they prioritize one criterion over another. A trade-off happens in a situation where a design has good results in one criteria, but not in another. Often you will find that you need to prioritize one criterion over another when considering changes to your designs. What kinds of trade-offs did you make in your submitted design? Now you and your partner will discuss your design with another pair. What trade-offs did you make? How were the trade-offs that other pairs made similar or different? You might respond, trying to get the longest average warning time might require using more sensors, which can be expensive, and it might increase the number of false alarms. You will have a chance to write about your trade-offs for after-hours work. The explanations you provide will help you when it's time to write a conclusion for your final proposal at the end of the project. Next, you'll complete your table. Row 3 is for setting your goals. Goals are numbers that you will try to achieve in your next design. Your goal may be a specific number, like one false alarm, or a range of numbers, like average warning time of 45 to 60 minutes. To figure out your goals, you should think about the ranges of numbers that your colleagues shared, and also think about which criterion you are focusing on as a priority. The bottom row is for your redesign strategies. These are strategies to help you reach the goals you've just set in the row above. Your redesign strategies may include suggestions from the feedback letter, or you may wish to revisit the dossier. You can include a specific value or range, or just a description of the strategy. Determine your goals and redesign strategies. Record them in the bottom two rows of the table. Students, determine your goals and complete a redesign strategy for each criterion. Testing final designs. Optimal, most successful, considering the situation. At Futura, we choose an optimal design based on evidence from many tests. It's impossible to strongly address all three criteria equally, so you had to make choices, set priorities, and accept trade-offs when you designed your warning systems. Now you should have a better idea of what your optimal design might look like. Next, you will conduct more iterative tests using Hannah's feedback. Your goals will help you choose the final optimal design you want to propose. The objective for today's testing is to identify your optimal design. Your optimal design may end up being one that you already completed previously or a new one you test today. Remember, you have limited time to plan and test new designs. Build and test new versions of your design to find the optimal one. Analyze each version before you plan the next and record your data. Students, navigate to the Tsunami Alert Design Tool and return to iterative testing. View the Tsunami Alert data sheet. Remember to record each new version's test results. Look over your designs and choose the one that you think is optimal. Write optimal or final next to the version number you select. Students, choose and label one optimal design. Decide which design you will propose to the project director. If you need to, continue testing after hours, but you should have identified an optimal design by the next workday. This will be the design that you will write about in your proposal. Have you had more success with your Tsunami Warning System designs now that you have refined goals and a better understanding of the project? Activity 2, After Hours Work. For this task, you will complete the trade-offs reflection form. The trade-offs you describe should be about the version you choose as your optimal design. Students, complete the After Hours Work. End of Day 6.